So Kodak, of course, had a long history of making folding cameras, particularly in the first half of the 20th century. They introduced their first folding camera in 1897 uh, with the folding pocket Kodak, and then built a whole variety of folding cameras for the next 60 years. But of course, um, the era of the folding camera had to come to a close at some point, and in the late 1940s, Kodak introduced what would turn out to be its last folding camera, which was the Kodak Tourist um, series of cameras. The Tourist was first introduced in 1948, and like uh, many of the Kodak folding cameras that they produced in the first half of the 20th century, the camera was released in a wide range of very different quality levels. So the lowest quality level camera um, was really not much more than a glorified box camera uh, with just a single speed shutter and um, non-focusing lens. But the range of different quality levels that they ended up producing was pretty astonishing. And the high-end camera, the high-end version, was actually capable of, of producing really high-end, um, even professional quality results. So these cameras are fairly easy to find, especially the, the low-end models. And somehow I've managed to acquire three of them. So this is the second one. Um, and then I've got a third one here as well. All three of these cameras are um, three different quality levels, so it will be interesting to look at as part of this video. The first one here is an original Kodak Tourist. Um, like I said, the Tourist was originally released in 1948, and the Tourist original model, um, now called the Tourist 1 to distinguish it from the Tourist 2, is, is easy to, to distinguish because it's got this single, um, single bump for one straight through viewfinder. Um, then in 1951, Kodak introduced the Tourist 2, which was essentially the exact same camera. The difference was, as you can see, the housing for the viewfinder was widened, so it was um, almost the entire top width of the camera. And the viewfinder itself appears smaller, but it's actually quite a bit brighter. Um, interestingly, you can see the the uh, viewport on the back of the camera is on this side of the camera, but the, the forward-facing viewfinder is in the opposite side. And what I suspect was Kodak had intended to um, create a built-in rangefinder for the Tourist 2 camera, but then decided that they just weren't going to continue with the folding uh, cameras in their lineup and never created a um, rangefinder version of this camera. Although the top housing of the Tourist 2 certainly appears that it was set up to do so at some point. Now, if I go back to the Tourist 1 that I've got here, it's pretty representative of the camera line in general. Um, so there's a button here that releases the, the lens board. The lens board is a self-erecting, self they called it at the time, lens. So as you open the lens board, the lens comes out and locks into position. And then this version is, like I said, it's not the high-end version. This is uh, the f8.8, .8. <laughs> so not a particularly fast lens, but it is set in the uh, flash diamatic shutter, which was not the worst shutter that they made for this camera. So this would be kind of a typical family camera that your average family would, would buy. Then if I go to um, one of the other models I've got here, um, the Tourist 2. This was the first one that I acquired and the one that I've shot with the most. Um, again, it looks exactly the same except for the top housing. It opens the same, push the button, and the lens is on a self-erecting system. You do have to kind of help it the last little bit there. Now the lens on this particular model is the Kodak Aniston f4.5, so quite a bit faster than the f8.8 that we were just looking at. It's also set in a much better shutter. So this one is the um, Kodomatic Flash 200. And as the name suggests, it has a top speed of 200. And I think it has, let's see. Yeah, this one's got a five speed shutter, which was compared to a three speed shutter on the previous version. Now, one of the most interesting aspects of these cameras um, was the clever back that they 
that Kodak put on these. So you can open it from either side and it will automatically hinge to the other side. So for instance, if I open it on this side, it will hinge to the other side. Um, and if I close that hinge and instead open this hinge, then I can open it the other way. <laughs> um, so it's useful for left-handed people and right-handed people, I guess. But most clever of all is that you can actually remove the back entirely. Now, why would you want to do that? Kodak actually produced a what's called a tourist adapter kit that replaces the back with a different back that allows you to use four different film formats, three uh, of which use the native 620 format. And then they actually have a adapter for the use of 828 film, which is a 35 millimeter film that was produced at the time. So the native format is of course six by nine on 620 film. And then you can, with the adapter back, you can install um, a mask on the back here that will mask it down to six by 4.5 or six by six on 620 film or 40 millimeters by 28, I think, millimeters uh, for the 828 film. Okay, now the last model that I've got here is the top end of, uh, of the range. And this was the one that was most sought after at the time. This one is the Kodak Synchro Rapid 800 shutter, a very high end um, 800th of a second shutter with a four element and a star lens. So this one really can produce excellent results. It's got a great shutter with a top speed of 800th of a second, which is which even by modern standards is very fast for a leaf shutter. It is quite a complex shutter though. Um, and so as a result, many of these are found today with inoperable shutters. This one does work um, and I, I might put it to use. Generally, the one that's um, easiest to use and most reliable is this 200 shutter. The Let's see, what was it called? The Flash Codomatic 200 shutter. And this one has the Anastun lens, not the Anastar lens. It's a three element triplet um, as opposed to the four element Tessar of the Anastar lens, but it, it does still produce excellent results. So this is the camera that I shoot with the most out of the three. Okay, so let's talk about the 1 800th of a second shutter and how Kodak achieved that. They used a very unique system for a leaf shutter, which is described here in one of their pamphlets. Each of these shutter blades actually rotates on a central pivot rather than opening and closing like a traditional sh um, leaf shutter does. So this allows the shutter to operate much more quickly. Now, the downside to that is it requires a secondary shutter behind the primary shutter in order to uh, block light from coming through the camera while the shutter is being cocked. Um, you can see it here as I demonstrate how this shutter works. I'll show you here again. As you cock the shutter and watch as I pull down the lever, you can see the primary shutter leaves are going to open and then close again as they rotate from one position to the next. And while they're doing that, there's a secondary shutter uh, behind that has to block that light. So it is quite a complicated shutter. So this is the Kodak Tourist Adapter Kit. And with the kit comes everything that you see here. Um, so instructions and a little zipping pouch for everything to, to sit in. Uh, the various masks for the, to put inside the camera for the different size negatives, including an 828 mask. So this one um, is for 828 film, which, like I said, is a 35 millimeter film. Um, kind of interesting that this camera is set up for shooting with such different film sizes as 828 uh, versus 620. Um, Obviously with the 828 film, <clears throat> the lenses of these cameras act more like a short little telephoto um, than a standard lens. So just I have to keep that in mind if I shoot with 828. And then also for 828, there are the two, of course, spool adapters, including an empty spool um, to get you started. And then for each of the different uh, sizes, there is a little mask for the viewfinder so that the viewfinder shows you what, you what the image will actually be. So 
Like I said, the native size of the camera is six by nine on 620 film. There's a two and a quarter square, six by six frame. There's a six by 4.5, what they call duo, duo 620. Uh, basically half frame 620, if you will, and then the 828. Now, the most important part of the whole kit, um, and probably the most interesting, is that it, this, it comes with this other back. So you take the entire back off of your camera and replace it with this back. And this back has uh, little red windows for each of the different types of film. So you rotate this entire disc here um, to match the film size and frame that you've selected. And as you rotate this, it lines up to different uh, red windows. And so as you are using um, one of these particular sizes, the red window will be aligned with the correct numbers on the backing paper of the film. Quite clever. So um, I'm looking forward to using this as well and probably will demonstrate this on uh, one of the shots as well. Okay, now we're gonna load the film into the camera and the first thing I wanna do is change out the standard back for the uh, tourist adapter kit back because I will be shooting 828 film uh, for this experiment. So I need to take the uh, adapter back and rotate the disc into position for 828 film. I need to take out the empty 620 reel. We won't be using that, of course. Um, now, since I haven't used the 828 film before, I did take a peek at the instructions just to make sure I put these little adapters in the correct way. So there's an 828 adapter that goes in the take-up side, and then there's another adapter that goes in on the feed side. Then once the adapters are in place, I've got the empty 828 reel that goes into the take-up side. As I said, 828 is a 35 millimeter wide film, but it is a roll film. Now I need to install the mask. So this will mask down the image to the correct size of the frame on the film. You can see it's quite a long ways for the film to go from one spool to the other since the camera is actually a 620 film native. Here I am unrolling the roll film in 828 size and I will of course load it just like any other roll film. Starting with the take up side, this is how I do it um, just because I find that it's easier to keep the film taut. Um, and then installing the feed side, then I will make sure that's tight before I put the back back on. Now once the back is back on, um, I'll open up the little red window and advance the film until I get to frame one. Now there is one more thing that I need to do and that is to install the viewfinder mask. This makes the viewfinder show you the, the range of what the image will actually uh, be. That just clips right into place and once that's done, it is ready to shoot. Well, I have to say I'm extremely impressed with the results from this camera and film combination. Uh, to be frank, I wasn't expecting much. Um, a lot of times when you use these conversion kits, the film plane registration gets a little out of whack. The film doesn't quite fit in quite right, but these images are incredibly sharp. I couldn't ask for more um, in, at this film size. Now, part of that, of course, is that we're using a lens that's designed for six by nine coverage. So on the smaller film format, we're really using the sweet spot of the lens, if you will. But even with that consideration, this, these results are really impressive. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about uh, 828 film. 
As you can see here, I've got 828 film, the results of this experiment here on the left side, and then just some standard 35 millimeter film here on the right side. Now, the interesting thing about 828, it was introduced by Kodak in 1935, just one year after they had introduced the standardized 35 millimeter cassette. Now, the standardized 35 millimeter cassette, of course, uses 35 millimeter, millimeter film uh, with sprocket holes. And in 1935, when they introduced 828 film, it's essentially the same film stock as 35 millimeter in that it's the same width, it's 35 millimeters wide, but minus the sprocket holes. So it is a roll film, as you saw me load the camera. Um, it comes on a little spool and it's got backing paper. And without the sprocket holes, that allows the camera to use more width of the film and get an, uh, a larger negative. So. The standard negative size for 828 is 40 millimeters by 28 millimeters. The standard negative size for 35 millimeter film with sprockets is uh, 24 millimeters by 36 millimeters. It doesn't sound like much of a difference, and maybe in this video it doesn't look like much of a difference, but it is 30% more negative space on the 828 film per frame as compared to the 35 millimeter film with sprockets. So that's it for this episode. Um, yet another fun little camera to shoot with. I know I say that a lot, but this one really was quite a bit of fun. Um, it was fun to experiment with the 828 film as well. I hadn't done that before. So the Kodak Tourist was the last folding camera that Kodak produced. Uh, they finished uh, producing these cameras in 1958. And there's tons of them out there. If you're interested in finding one, they're not that expensive. Thanks again for joining me, and I will see you next time.